Hey, it's Ashley from Smart Edition Academy. And in today's video, we have a HESI review on equations with one variable. So we are going to be solving equations together today. We will look at one and two step equations, solving multi-step equations, and also solving inequalities. So before we jump in, be sure to check out the links in the description of this video where you will find HESI practice tests, our HESI Facebook study group, our HESI boot camp, and of course our online HESI course to help you prepare for your exam. Okay, so let's jump into it. The basics of solving equations is that we need to use properties of equality in order to get the variable by itself. So this table here is more of a complex thing than you really need. It looks complicated. There's a lot of letters, a lot of examples. I want to give you a simpler way to think about these property of equalities. So basically what we need is this here. What you do on one side of the equation, you have to do on the other, okay? So what you do on one side, you do on the other side. So I want you to think about a scale because when we have an equation, we have an equal sign. So I want you to think about a scale, right? If I had a scale, like a balance beam, okay? And on one side of the balance beam, I had X. Okay, and on the other side, I have four, okay? This is telling me that X is equal to four. If they are balanced, they are equal. So what happens if I add two to my X, right? Well, now this would be heavier on the left. I need to add two to the right to maintain equality, okay? Same thing would happen if I was subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. So when we're solving for equations, we're actually just working backwards to get the variable by itself. So if I took away the two here, right, then this two would have to be taken away to be balanced, and then I could find that x equals four. So let's look at some examples. I have x plus four equals nine. Okay, so in order to get x by itself, I need to get rid of this 4, so I'm going to subtract 4. But remember, if I do it on one side, I need to do it on the other side to keep balance. So what I have left on the left is x, and that will equal 9 minus 4, which is 5. Okay, so we just subtracted. You do the same thing on each side. What about negative 3 plus x equals 4? Well, to get x by itself, I need to get rid of the negative 3. The opposite of negative 3 would be a positive 3. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So when I do that, it cancels out on the left, and I have x equals 4 plus 3 is 7. Okay, so these are our properties of equality. 2x equals 12. This is 2 times x. So the opposite, we're always using the inverse operation, is division. Those would cancel out, and I would get x equals 12 divided by 2 is 6. And last but not least, if x divided by, remember fraction signs just mean division, x divided by 5 equals 6. Well, the opposite of division is multiplication, so I can multiply by 5 on both sides, and I will get x equals 30. Okay, so again, properties of equality just mean whatever you do on one side, you do on the other side. So what happens when we have two-step equations? Okay, two-step equations... You're going to use the addition and subtraction first, okay? And then we can go through and use multiplication and division. So always get rid of the addition and subtraction first, and then we can divide. Very important when we're solving two-step equations. So let's look at a few examples. Okay, let's try a two-step equation together. So we have x divided by negative 2 minus 3 equals 5. So our first step is to get rid of this minus 3. So I do the opposite operation, which would be to add 3. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I have x divided by negative 2. 5 plus 3 is 8. So now x divided by negative 2. To get rid of that, I need to multiply. Use the opposite operation. Do it on one side. You have to do it on the other side. So you end up getting x equals negative 16 as your answer. How about this one? 4x plus 3 equals 8. If you think you've got it, feel free to pause the video, try it out on your own, and then come back to us when you're ready. But if you want to follow along, the first thing I would do is subtract 3 from both sides. So I have 4x equals 8 minus 3 is 5. 
And then I need to get rid of the four, which is multiplied. So I do the opposite, which is division. And we just have a fraction as our answer, five over four. I do see that as one of my options. Okay, oftentimes we may need to turn this into a mixed number. So just a quick review of that would be five over four is the same thing as one because four goes into five one time. I can pull out one group and then I'll have one left over. Okay, but we have five fourths as our answer. Okay, now what does it look like to solve an equation when we have multiple variables? So in this case, we're trying to solve for W. So our goal is to get W by itself. So I need to move everything else over. So I'm going to subtract my 2L. That's how I'm going to get it to cancel out. So I'll just write that as P minus 2L equals 2W. So now from here, what I do is I divide by two to get it to cancel out. I need to divide this whole side by two. Okay, divide the whole thing by two. So I have P minus 2L all divided by two equals W and that's it. That's my answer. Now we can get a little more complex and we may need to look for multi-step equations. So our process here is to first simplify each side. So we may need to use the distributive property to get rid of those parentheses. We may need to get rid of fractions or we may need to combine some like terms. Okay, once we've done that, now we're back to just probably close to a two-step equation where we're trying to use addition and subtraction first and then do multiplication and division. So we basically need to clean it up a little bit and then we can use the same strategy. So here's an example. Okay, so now our equations are getting a bit more complicated. In this multi-step equation, we are going to need to do some distribution and then combine some like terms, okay? So I'm gonna look at the left side of my equation and distribute this two first. So two times four X would be eight X. Two times plus one would be plus two. I still have my minus five equals three. Now I need to distribute on the right side this negative sign. So that's gonna change the signs of what's inside of my parentheses. So minus four X plus three. Now I can combine like terms. So on the left side, I can combine the two and the nine, negative five. So this would be negative three. And then on the right side, I can combine the three and the three. So that's six. Okay, so once you get to this step, when I have variables on both sides of the equation, I wanna move a variable over. So in this case, I'm gonna add four X to both sides. So now all my variables are on the same side, 12 X minus three equals six. And now I'm back to just like a normal two-step equation. So once we distribute, combine like terms, move our variables over, we can solve just like we've been solving our other problems. So 12 X equals nine, Divide each side by 12, and we get x equals 9 twelfths, which we can actually simplify. Divide each of these by 3. This is 3 fourths. Okay, so here is another multi-step equation to try. So on the left side, it doesn't look like there's anything I can simplify. But on the right, I'm going to distribute this 2. So 2 thirds x plus 2 equals negative one half x. And now I can distribute the two, so plus two x and then plus two. So if I'm looking to combine anything, it looks like all I can combine is this negative one half x plus two x. So negative one half plus two, just gonna have a little sidebar up here. Okay, I don't have a common denominator, right? Cause two is the same thing as two over one. So what I would do is change both of these to have a denominator of two. So this is the same thing as negative one half plus, instead of just two, it would be four over two. Okay, so then that's a little bit easier to combine. So I have two thirds x plus two equals negative one plus four would be three. So this would be three over two x plus two. So again, my next step here would be to get my X's on the same side. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. This time I'll move my two thirds X over. I'll move the one on the left over. Doesn't really matter. 
Okay, but again, I need to make sure I have the ability to add and subtract fractions. So three over two minus two thirds, I would wanna have common denominators. So I would change these to be, I'll do again a little sidebar over here, six as my denominator. So three over two is the same thing as nine over six and two over three is the same thing as four over six. Okay, so when I do that subtraction, I get five, six, x plus two. And then now I can try to get x by itself by subtracting two from both sides. And you get zero equals five, six, x. And when you have a fraction, when you wanna try to get a fraction, uh, the x by itself, get rid of the fraction, I like to multiply by the reciprocal, which means you just flip it. So this is the same thing as multiplying by six over five. You could just divide if you wanted to, um, as long as you remember how to divide fractions. But I'm just gonna multiply by the reciprocal. That gets me to cancel all this out. And because we're multiplying by zero, our answer is still zero. So x equals zero. Okay, so a lot of steps to this one because we had to worry about fractions, but it's the same process. Distribute, combine like terms, and then try to get x by itself. Okay, so here's a multi-step equation where we have multiple variables, and in this case, we need to solve for x. Okay, so we're gonna start the same way. We're going to distribute. So the left side will stay the same, and then m times x will be mx, m times x1, okay, stay just like that. So from here, I wanna get x by itself. Remember, I'm gonna add this term to both sides. And in this case, we're not really combining any terms. We're just moving everything over. And then my last step would just be to divide by m. So I'm just going to divide everything by m here. So my final answer will look like this. It may be messy, but that's it. So lastly, today we will talk about inequalities. So we have the same process for inequalities. We try to simplify each side, use addition and subtraction, then use multiplication and division. But I have highlighted the one very important difference between solving equations and solving inequalities. So when we have an inequality, if we multiply or divide by a negative, we need to make sure we reverse the inequality sign. Okay, so let's see what that means. Why do we have to do that? So say we have these two inequalities, right? These are true inequalities. Three is less than five is true. Four is greater than or equal to negative two is true. So watch what happens if I multiply each side of this equation, let's say by negative two. Okay, because remember to maintain balance, we have to do it the same thing on each side. So I'm gonna multiply each side by negative two. So this would be negative six. And on the right, this would be negative 10. So if I put the inequality sign in order to make this true, what would it have to be? Would it be less than or would it be greater than? So negative six, is that less than negative 10 or greater than negative 10? So if you think about a number line, negative six is closer to zero. So we need to flip this sign to make it true, okay? So when you multiply by that negative two, we have to flip the sign to keep a true inequality. So what happens on the other one is say we divide by negative 2, okay? So it worked for multiplication, let's see, with division. So 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. So before we had greater than or equal, but now negative 2, okay, is that greater than 1 or less than 1? This is definitely less than, and we'll keep the or equal to sign, less than or equal to 1, okay? So when we multiply or divide by a negative, we flip the sign. Very, very important. So let's look at an example. So when it comes to inequalities, we're gonna use the same process. We just need to make sure that we keep our inequality sign unless we multiply or divide by a negative. So let's see what happens here. So first step, let's distribute. Okay, so we're going to distribute on both sides. Three times two is six. Three times x is three x. It's less than two times three x would be six x. 2 times negative 1 would be negative 2. So remember, we're trying to get our x's on the same side of the equation. So it doesn't really matter which one we move over. I like to try to keep my coefficient in front of my variable positive, so I don't have to worry about flipping the sign, but it doesn't really matter. 
add two to both sides here. And now we have eight is less than three X, and then we can divide by three. Okay, so what we end up getting here is eight thirds is less than X. Okay, so your choices may have your X on the left side of the equation, so we just need to mirror image this. Okay, so this would be X is greater than eight thirds. And okay, so let's try one more example of inequalities with fractions. So this one we are going to, again, just distribute on both sides. Okay, distribute on both sides. So I will get X minus three over two when I distribute that one half is greater than or equal to, this would be two fourths X plus one fourth minus two. Okay, so now I can just do some combining terms on the right side of my equation. So I'll leave this two fourths X, nothing I combine there. But when I do one fourth minus two, I'm going to get negative seven fourths. Okay, negative seven fourths. And if you need a little bit more support on adding and subtracting fractions, make sure you check out our video on that. Um, so from here, I'm going to move my x's over. This is the same thing as 1 half x. So I'm really just subtracting 1 half x. So when I have x minus 1 half x, I am left with 1 half x. So I'm just going to write it as 1 half this time. 1 half x. And then when I have this minus 3 over 2, I'm going to add 3 over 2 to both sides. So I have to do negative 7 fourths plus 3 over 2. Negative 7 fourths plus 3 over 2. So when I solve that, I end up getting negative 1 fourth. And then the last step is just to multiply each side by 2 to get x by itself. So what I end up doing is getting x is greater than or equal to negative 2 over 4. And if I look at my options here, they're all simplified. So it looks like X is greater than negative two over four is the same thing as negative one half. So that's my final answer. Okay, so thank you so much for following along on this video and be sure to uh, check out the rest of our videos for HESI review and we will see you in the next one.